the radius cutter consists of three pieces. Um, there are two um, supports that have pins in them. And then the, uh, the part that actually rotates and cuts the radius has um, you know, various holes in it for setting the height. Uh, in this particular case, I'm using the um, the lowest one to get the maximum height out of it. Um, the next thing you have to do is align your, your, your cross slide so that the cutting edge of the tool is lined up on the center line. And since we cut a, uh, or drilled a hole here before, that's simple to do by eye. And it's, it's on the center line. Um, the next thing you need to do is loosen these two set screws and lower the tool bit until it just touches the top of the wood so that that's the way you set the, um, the diameter of what you're going to cut. I've um, It just needs to barely touch. The final adjustment you want to make is this screw prevents the uh, turning portion from going down too low because you don't you don't want the tool to drop down to the center line. You want to be just above it because uh, otherwise the tool is engaging the, the part in two different uh, rotational directions and it will bind. You know, as you pass the center line, the part is now rotating the opposite direction from the perspective of the tool. And you don't want that to happen. Trust me, I know. You know now, I just brought the, uh, the cross light back so that the bit is just touching the edge of the part. Because the way this works is you want to remove, you know, just this corner here and you want to advance inwards uh, and I'm going to be advancing in about ten thousandths of the time at least that's how I'm going to start um, and then it's just a matter of you know bringing this up and down as the port's turning and you'll be rounding this corner and you when it gets to vertical you want to stop because we're going to you know, if you go any further, you're going to be cutting into the back end of the piece, and you'll really make a mess. Um, so you just want to bring it up until it's vertical, come down again, advance it, and keep going. I also find that it's best to start on top and work my way down, rather than coming up. I'm just taking the corner off the piece, and now I'm going to advance um, ten thousandths toward the headstock and do it again, and just continue this process until we have a hemisphere. As you can see, we're just about there.
and that's it. So, back this out of the way. Now what you want to do next is any sanding you're going to do on here, and I'm going to bring it down to about 320 grit. Um, you want to do that now on this side because once you, once you flip it around you'll never be able to get back in here with the you know, mechanical advantage of a lathe with sandpaper. So um, I'm going to start with um, 60 grit That makes a big difference. <clears throat> I'm going to switch to a hundred. That's a two twenty. And finally, some uh, 320. That's really nice. It's um, very smooth, and it actually has a bit of a shine to it. I'm going to buff it now with just a, this is quadruple zero steel wool. This just is making sure that any, um, any waste that got stuck into the grain pattern is uh, is removed. <coughs> that looks like Jupiter. All right. The the next step is to is to remove this from the uh, from the lathe. Cut this end off, and then I made um, to hold it the other way. I just took a dowel and drove a um, well. I poured a hole through it, and then I put a sheetrock screw through here. So this is going to become my new uh, mandrel into the chuck, and the you know drywall screws have an incredible amount of grip to them, and uh, you know, the way the threading works, you know, the turning will always be making it tighter instead of looser. So, um, I'll get that all set up and then get back to you and we'll, we'll turn the other half. The uh, screw, by the way, is going to go into this, uh, this hole that we, that we cut. That's why I wanted to get all this finishing done because that's going to flip to the other side. I've um, cut the dowel off. Uh, this was the part that was in the chuck. Um, and I've mounted that little uh, small dowel with the, with the wood screw that I showed you before um, into the hole. So now 
this is all set up. What I've done is I've made a pencil mark um, at the center point of the uh, equator, if you will. And what I'm going to do now is jog in until I'm lined up with that. It's uh, not easy to see. What I'm going to do is um, zero the, the ZDRO um, axis there so I don't go past that point. Um, everything else is the same. I didn't make any adjustments to this and you certainly don't want to. You want to continue with the same radius you've been using. So now it's just a matter of repeating the exact same process on this end until I get to the halfway point and we'll finish sanding it and then uh, Jupiter will be uh, complete. Here's Jupiter. You can see that the, um, even though the wood started the grain running uh, parallel to the equator, as you cut into wood you never know what you're going to get. So um, it still looks like Jupiter, but you know it's certainly not perfect, but I don't know, I think it looks good. It has a shine to it, especially because I used steel wool to finish it. I will probably um, airbrush a matte finish lacquer over this, both to protect it and to eliminate the shine and make it look, look more planet-like. But anyway, that's the process. I suspect this is going to get harder and harder as I work on the smaller and smaller planets, but we'll see.